I'd rather punch a baby in the face than watch this movie again. Now, if you've actually managed to see this entire movie, I have to commend you. You've got a lot of guts. That or you're just some kind of masochist. You know, a lot of people might try and defend Son of the Mask by saying, hey, you know, lay off, it's just a kid's movie. But just because it's a kid's movie doesn't excuse it from being terrible. I mean, there's tons of movies that are technically made for kids but can still appeal to adults. Just look at pretty much any movie made by Pixar or Disney. Now there are several things missing from this movie, but the most obvious would be a likable main character. Jim Carrey was pretty much essential to the success of the first film, so without him, you have to create a pretty damn appealing substitute. But instead we get Jamie Kennedy's character who pretty much throughout the entirety of the film comes off as a bumbling idiot. And not the fun kind of bumbling idiot, because he pretty much hardly has any redeeming qualities. If your character is going to act stupid throughout the whole movie, then he better be pretty f***ing funny. The movie starts off in the Edge City Museum of Arts and History with Ben Stein giving a tour and talking about the mask and the history of the mask. Apparently the mask was created by Loki and then thrown down to Earth to just create a bunch of mayhem. And coincidentally, Loki is actually in the museum. And at this point in the movie, you're thinking, okay, you know, let's give this thing a shot. But then it all starts going downhill when Loki finds out the mask on display is a fake. And then he freaks out and takes off Ben Stein's face. Yes, we're less than five minutes into this movie and already I'm starting to just feel sad. Loki then hangs up Ben Stein's face on the display shoots at a bunch of security guards and turns into the Tasmanian devil. The real mask ends up in Fringe City and gets picked up by the dog of Jamie Kennedy's character, Tim, who gets a headbutt to the balls right away. I would like to say that's a pretty good representation of what it feels like to sit and watch this movie, but that probably doesn't do it justice. In fact, getting hit in the balls 10 times over just barely scratches the surface. Then Tim has this horrible daydream of him and his wife having kids and for some reason the babies have fangs. It's actually really incredible how stupid this character comes off as so quickly after being introduced. I seriously don't remember the last time I developed so much contempt for a main character so quickly in a movie. I mean in the original Jim Carrey's character was kind of clumsy and nervous but he was just a genuinely nice guy, so you were rooting for him. But in this, Jamie's character just comes off as stupid and annoying. By the way, having Mario Kart in this movie is insulting to Mario Kart. By the way, how many of you hold a Game Boy like this? Just show of hands. Just want to get an estimate. Who's a fish? Who's a fish? <laughs> Stop it, I mean it. Who's a turkey? <laughs> Who's a rabid dog? Wants to shoot themselves. Tim has to go to this Halloween party at his work, but since he doesn't really have a great costume, his wife suggests that he wear the mask, even though that would probably make a worse costume. I mean, how did he expect to keep it on his face? Anyways, he puts it on and turns into the mask, and honestly, after watching him be the mask, I really, it was really hard for me not to turn off the movie and just review something else. <laughs> Seriously, it manages to get progressively worse when the mask puts on this old song and dance sequence. It's not funny, it's not charming, it's not even entertaining. The best way to describe it is as cinematic torture. All you can do is just sit there and pray that it ends at some point. I mean it would be really easy just to turn off the movie, but in my case I had to sit there and watch this entire thing for the purposes of doing this review. And the worst part is it doesn't even really look like the mask, it just looks like Jamie Kennedy with some green paint on his face and plastic hair. When Jim Carrey played the mask, it was perfect because Jim Carrey is very animated in terms of his behavior and his facial features. But Jamie Kennedy falls flat in every scene. I mean, it's not even close. Anyways, he goes home and has sex with his wife and I guess somehow the mask leached into his DNA because then we have this sequence showing mask sperm. At several points while watching the movie, I was convinced that it couldn't get any worse than this, but the movie managed to keep proving me wrong with sequences like these. So Tim's wife is now pregnant with their, I don't know, mask baby. 
as represented during their visit to the doctor when she gets nauseous and throws up bubbles. Is that normal? No. And what's worse, it's not covered by insurance. What does that even mean? Bubbles aren't covered by the insurance? Oh no, not bubbles. Then Tim's wife starts having cravings for stupid stuff like silly string. Oh, I get it. Because, you know, the baby is making her eat and do silly things because the baby's silly. What's really amazing is these sequences are supposed to be funny, but they don't even come close to stirring up even a sarcastic chuckle. I honestly don't know the last time I felt so bad for a movie. Honestly, while watching it, I just started to feel embarrassed for the movie. Imagine watching a stand-up comic completely bombing on stage. I mean bombing in the worst way possible, where not even a single audience member even gives out a courtesy laugh. It's just dead silence. Now imagine that going on for an hour and a half. That's what it's like watching this movie. But what's even worse is you know they're gonna try some stupid shit with the baby that's not gonna be funny either. Loki's gotta find the baby so that he can find the mask, so he turns into a bee and stings this woman then copies her appearance so that he can get into the birth registry. Who are you? You. Me? Who? Ah! See? That was supposed to be funny. That's what this whole movie's like. And of course at some point the dog puts on the mask, leading to some crazy consequences. Even though I could have sworn they already did this in the first movie. So Tim's wife has to go on a business trip so she leaves him with the baby. And since Tim is a complete idiot, he just leaves the baby in front of the TV while he goes to sleep. So then I guess the baby has thoughts of getting Tim put into a knot house or something. Meanwhile, the dog has thoughts about how to murder the baby. The next day, the kid turns completely into a cartoon and Tim just freaks out. At this point, the movie starts turning into an episode of Looney Tunes. The only difference being that Looney Tunes was actually entertaining. This just goes back and forth for a while with the dog coming up with plans to get rid of the baby and Loki dressing up in stupid costumes to get into people's houses and inspect their babies. Meanwhile, Tim is just left standing around like a moron completely helpless to all the wacky shit going on in his house. Then there's this sequence entirely devoted to Tim trying to deal with the baby's pee. It's just beyond stupid. I honestly don't know what to say anymore. I'm, I'm truly amazed at this movie's ability to consistently get worse and worse. It stops feeling like a movie at some point. It just starts feeling like a bunch of random shit just strung together that's not funny and not entertaining. Loki finally shows up and you think, okay, good. Finally, something is now going to happen. The story's gonna progress. You'd think that. But Loki comes in, decides it's not the baby he's looking for, and then knocks Tim out with a giant boxing glove and leaves? What? Are you fucking kidding me? You didn't notice that the house was messed up? Or the piano hanging from the stairs? Or Tim's crazy behavior? Then we have this exorcist joke, and it's because of this that Loki then realizes it is the baby because he's a fucking idiot. Then there's this confrontation between Loki and Tim, and Tim doesn't want to tell him where the mask is, so Loki threatens him at first, and then launches a giant grenade at him. Why would he do this? If he kills Tim, then he's not gonna be able to find out where the mask is at all. So this just makes no sense. Then Odin takes over Tim's body and tells Loki that he's taking away his powers. Once again, this makes no sense to me. The whole movie, Odin has been harassing Loki to find the mask, and now that Loki is really close to finding the mask, Odin takes away all of his powers? Also, I've gotta say, I don't understand why it's so hard for them to find the mask. I mean, they knew it was an edge city, and they also knew when a baby was born of the mask. So if they could sense all of this stuff, don't you think that they could be able to pinpoint its location? So then Loki sneaks into Tim's house and summons Odin somehow and convinces Odin to give him back his powers. Then Loki disguises himself as the baby and then as Tim's wife before taking the baby with him and telling Tim he has one hour to bring him the mask. So while Tim and his wife try to get the mask back from their dog, Loki and the baby kill some time by playing a game of Twister. Then Tim brings him the mask 
but Loki doesn't want to give away the baby because he's grown too attached to it. Really? You spent an hour playing some stupid games with the kid and you've grown too attached? This of course leads to Tim putting on the mask and then having a high speed chase down the streets in the mask mobile leading up to a fight between the two of them which eventually ends when loki loses all of his powers again then odin comes down and tim spins him some stupid speech about how he should take it easy on loki and just gives them the mask and that's i guess it's all good now and that's pretty much it i you know i guess they're just stuck with this wacky baby now i mean what's it gonna be like when this kid gets older how is he not going to be a complete psychopath but in all honesty it really doesn't matter because the movie is finally over and that's the most important part just wanted to throw this out here how many of these do you guys think they actually sold 